Well, I wanted to go through a little bit of water exercise tips and some examples of how to use deep water running and how to uh, do some shallow water plyometrics. Now, I've actually been doing a lot of research on running in the water, uh, really dating back to the early 90s. I've always found it interesting. I found uh, running in the water because I was an injured runner and this was one of the ways to try to rehab from an injury. And it's a very common way to, for people to find uh, deep water running or shallow water running uh, in that they've had an injury and they need to um, still do some running, but they can't tolerate on land running because of the impact. And so running in the water becomes a nice sort of uh, rehab uh, exercise. Now, uh, what we've also found in research is that runners can benefit, healthy runners can benefit from running in, in the water as well. It's a way to supplement mileage that you do on land. And in some cases, people use running in the water 100% of the time. Uh, there has been good research to show that running in the water can be effective for um, transferring to running on land. However, the key with running in the water is you need to use high intensity. And so you need to do a lot of interval type of work. If you are injured and you're using running in the water, you need to be careful with that. Uh, there is resistance in any direction you move while you're running in the water, either deep water running or shallow water running. And so you just need to be careful. If you are just trying to supplement your mileage, uh, running in the water can be a good way to maintain, you know, the health of muscles and tendons and, and joints. Uh, it's a nice way for triathletes to add on a little bit of running in the water. You can do it after a swim. Maybe add on uh, 10 minutes or 20 minutes. So I'm going to go through just some ways uh, that I use uh, deep water running and uh, shallow water plyometrics. Just a quick definition, uh, deep water running is uh, running in the water where you cannot touch the bottom of the pool. So your feet are, are you're 100% su suspended in the water. Um, it's uh, a lot of people often say this is underwater running, which is not correct. Your head is always above uh, water, so walk, water is up to uh, neck level. Shallow water running or shallow water plyometrics is where you are touching the bottom of the pool. Typically with shallow water running and uh, shallow water plyometrics, you are in about waist deep water or at least between um, your navel and uh, chest area. That's about as deep as you would go for uh, either running uh, in shallow water or doing some plyometrics. I'm going to focus on the plyometrics part, but if you do shallow water locomotion, it's actually really great to go forward, backwards, and sideways uh, while you're moving through the water. Most of my research has been in deep water running, and I've done a little bit in uh, shallow water uh, plyometrics. So I'm going to play some video here of running in the water. Uh, this is one technique, and we refer to this technique as cross-country or overstriding uh, type running in the water. You're really focusing on range of motion. Let me go backwards. You're really focusing on range of motion of, uh, of, of the running motion, and uh, you are not trying to move forward fast at all. You are keeping your hands in pretty much a fist so that you're not doing a sculling action. And in uh, these exercises, I'm wearing a neoprene vest that's made by Hoob Design. It's actually made for stand-up paddle boarding, but it's perfect for uh, running in the water. It provides a bit of buoyancy. You don't always need buoyancy, but a bit of buoyancy can help sort of maintain more of an upright vertical uh, position. Uh, so having a little bit of buoyancy uh, can really be uh, nice. And the nice thing about the hoop design vest is it actually keeps you warm a bit or in that chest area keeping you some warmth as you're, you're exercising in the water. Now I am probably leaning a little too far forward here. Uh, it's just a mistake. It's actually good to see this. And, and as I go back and do some more running in the water, I'll try to be more uh, vertical. You are not trying to move forward fast at all. And sometimes by leaning for, forward, you're actually uh, trying to move forward uh, too fast. 
One thing you need to be careful of with running in the water and using this style of deep water running is this position of the leg or lower extremity. When your knee is straight and you're pulling your leg backwards, there is a tendency for the knee to hyperextend. The hamstring is actually quite weak when you flex the hips a lot and you extend the knee. Uh, the hamstring is very long in this position and uh, it's not very strong. It can't create a lot of force. And as such, the knee can have a tendency to hyperextend. So you need to be really careful if you have a knee injury using this type of, of uh, running in the water. In fact, if someone comes to me and they say they're rehabbing a knee injury, I tell them not to use this uh, form of running in the water. If you're healthy, this can be a good way to stress the hamstrings, uh, the posterior aspect of the thigh, uh, as well as work on some of the range of motion of the hip, working both the hip flexors and extensors. All right, so the next style of deep water running <clears throat> is high knee and high knee is just as it sounds it looks just like it sounds you're going up and down with your legs almost like a stir stepping type of movement and again you're working uh, some nice range of motion of the hip and you're really trying to bring the uh, leg down and bring it back up as fast as possible these styles of running in the water the intensity is really gauged by uh, how fast you're moving the leg so stride frequency the faster the stride frequency, the higher the range of motion. However, the faster the stride your frequency, you got to keep focusing on keeping a good range of motion with the joints. There is a tendency to go with a shorter range of motion as you uh, go with a higher frequency. The third style of, of water locomotion I use is this. I call it sitting, and I'm doing just that. I'm sitting in a, a, a position like this, and I'm moving backwards. This is a really nice exercise for uh, the hamstring uh, and a bit of the hip flexors as well. And then finally, I just finish up with um, some uh, cross-country style. And what I do when I do a routine, I'll actually go uh, in the length of the, uh, the direction of the length of the pool, and I'll do one length of cross-country, one length of high knee, and then one length of, of, um, of sitting, and then I repeat. And then I like to finish up with some uh, other motions, like an egg beater type of movement, and then even just vertical flutter kick where I'm not moving forward at all and uh, just staying uh, vertically. The egg beater kick is actually just a nice way to take advantage of some of the um, resistance of uh, water and that you are uh, getting resistance in all directions. This is great for the AD ductors, the adductors, as well as the AB ductors the abductors. All right, so after um, uh, looking at some deep water running, let me show you some water plyometric uh, exercise as well. And in water plyometrics, you're doing this in shallow water. And now uh, this is uh, plyometrics are those dynamic jumping type movements. You can do them on land. The uh, risk of doing uh, plyometrics on land is that impact. We've actually done some research on how active muscles are while doing jumping in the water versus on land, and it's actually pretty similar. But what you're doing by doing this exercise in the water is you're removing that impact with the ground because of the buoyancy force. So you can still get a really good stress to the muscles and the tendons uh, doing this type of jumping movement in the water. So I do some bilateral jumping, some single leg jumping, and this is a great way to see if you've got a strong side and a weak side. And I also take advantage of uh, this and do some lunging type movements as well as some side to side movement where I'm crossing the legs as well as not crossing the legs. And then finally, I do some high knee uh, type step, uh, of stepping. And again, anytime you do these types of movements, you want to avoid any high, uh, uh, you want to avoid any acute pain. You have acute pain, you stop doing whatever it is you're doing. And in this case, because I'm doing this outdoors in a colder pool, I'm actually using the long sleeve uh, hoob SUP uh, 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 neoprene top. And that's actually very comfortable for doing these types of movements. All right, so now let me...
summarize where we are. Deep water running and shallow water running and uh, shallow water plyometric tips. Um, some buoyancy aids, some type of, of uh, neoprene vest or other types of buoyancy can be helpful just so you can focus on the lower extremity movement versus sculling and trying to keep yourself upright. Intensity is the key to on land training stimulus. So you've got to try harder in the water than on land. Uh, don't focus on forward velocity, for, focus more on cadence, stride frequency, and still try to keep the same uh, range of motion. This is a great uh, exercise for rehabbing from an injury. Avoid any sharp pains. This is also great for healthy runners to supplement on land running. And I encourage people to use a variety of intensities, uh, not just high intensity. Uh, that is really if you're using uh, deep water running, so running solely to replace uh, your running uh, entirely. But to supplement, use a variety of intensities. Avoid sharp pains, take advantage of water, providing resistance in any direction. So do some egg beater type of kick, even some uh, side to side uh, type jumping jack action uh, is great. For shallow water uh, locomotion, you might want to use some footwear. It does depend on the surface of the pool that you're doing this in, but you can get some nice sort of slip on shoes that uh, will, will avoid that abrasion uh, feeling on the bottom of the foot. You, you know, choose a depth of water that's comfortable, uh, but probably between the navel and the chest area. For shallow water locomotion, go forward, go backwards, even go sideways and alternate which way you're going sideways forward, which is the leading leg. That's a great uh, exercise for some AB and AD ductors. And then the plyometric exercises that you do on land, you can do them very easily in the water. You are reducing the uh, risk of impact and uh, can be a nice way to still stress the muscle and the tendons. Okay, I hope this is helpful. Thank you.